Crafty friends, today is Wednesday, April the 5th, and it's time for a What's Up Wednesday video. Thanks for joining me. If you're here watching live, do leave me a comment so that I know that you're along for the ride. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to comment as well and let me know what you thought about this video. So what we have here is a technique called triple layer stamping. We're going to stamp on these three layers, but so simply, it's not as if you have to go and do a whole bunch and line them all up. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you a really quick technique and easy way to do this so that this works out beautifully every single time. And with this little bit of space in between the white layers, if your stamping is not perfectly lined up, you're never going to know. So there we go. This features the Dragonfly Garden, and Forever Fern stamp sets. So these two are retiring uh, at the end of April, and so it's your last chance to get them. Uh, Forever Fern has been one that I've used a lot, the dies for it in any case, and more recently, more of the stamps. It really gives a beautiful uh, stamping experience with lots of different um, textures of leaves and uh, this lovely little splotchy piece here and a couple of greetings and then dragonfly garden while the punch is carrying forward the dragonfly garden stamp set itself that has the matching dragonflies in it is not so maybe we'll see another one uh, in the future oh great i'm glad to hear your friends were doing a card with it too vicky uh, it is kind of a neat technique and it's one i haven't done in a really long time a friend of mine, Andrea from Prairie Sky Stampers, had um, actually done it on a video recently, and I was like, "Well, that's something I haven't done in a long time." So here is the stamps, the sorry, the card that I did on the weekend to try it out, and it's very much muted colors. Again, we're using some retiring colors on here. This is uh, Sahara Sand and pear pizzazz one of my favorites this is evening evergreen and in color that's going out of the line and then so saffron uh, in there as the yellow and i'm going to switch this card up a little bit and do it tonight with mango melody pear pizzazz and bermuda bay so we'll see how these turn out mango melody is a card color that i haven't really embraced too much it really wasn't sort of my style uh, and um, so it's nice to kind of play with it play with it now as it's moving out of the line and still getting some life in it so this is your standard card base it's five and a half by eight and a half i've scored it at four and a quarter which is the middle point on the eight and a half inch side and then i'm going to fold it and burnish it and we can just set the card base aside we don't need that for the next bit for the stamping what we're going to be doing ultimately is on the card base you'll have this layer and i'll give you all the measurements they'll also be on my blog and then this layer and you don't have to match the card base with your matted pieces i chose to do that but certainly you don't have to and then these pieces matted together in the center and that's how this all goes together so we want to stamp on all the white pieces so we're only going to assemble the white pieces for the stamping part and then we'll put it all together so as i mentioned these matte pieces don't need to match your card base so let's set them aside and we'll go over the size of the three white pieces or you could do this on vanilla for sure so remember if you're watching live or watching the replay leave a comment so i know you're here uh, this piece of white is, oh, I've got the wrong side up. This is four by five and a quarter. And that is uh, the back layer. And then this piece is three by four and a quarter. And then our smallest piece is two by three and a quarter. The mats that go with are three and a quarter by four and a half that's the larger one and then two and a quarter by three and a half so i'm going to leave my little sticky note here so that you can see those measurements and maybe grab them the three on the top are your basic white and the two on the bottom are for the cardstock but 
I'll have these posted in my blog as well. All right, so our first step is to take some temporary adhesive of some kind. Now, Stampin' Up! doesn't currently sell a temporary adhesive, so I'm going to use some glue dots, and I'll show you how you can sort of make them a bit more temporary. Grid paper will help in this, but not an absolutely necessary. Uh, we're going to try our best to have our pieces line up so that there's an even border all the way around. And I know that's more difficult to see now that they're white on white, but basically we're looking at a half inch border between the, um, the pieces. So to use this as temporary adhesive, I'm going to put two on this piece and two on this piece. So I'm going to need four glue dots. And I'm just going to uh, put my thumb on them or maybe run them on my sweater a little bit just to take a bit of the stickiness off so they're not fully sticking down. It, it'll, we'll be able to get them loose, but just so that that keeps it from being far too sticky. So we'll take two of them and put them on the back of the white. And then we're going to position them on top of the other piece of white. Oh, I'm not quite in the center anymore. There we go. So as I mentioned, it's about a half inch border. Not going to get too concerned about it not being perfect, but I'm going to take my ruler just to kind of help me line it up a little bit. That looks fairly good. The mats that we put on afterwards are going to really help to hide any imperfections. So then on our smallest piece of two by three and a quarter, flip it over and add those somewhat sticky glue dots as well to the back of it. And then we're gonna layer these on. This is just to hold it in place while we do the stamping. And once again, we have about a half inch border. So it's taking my trusty ruler taking a quick peek along here to see that we're, you know, in around that range. That looks good. All right, so there's our three pieces put together. Now it's time to do some stamping. And I wanted to showcase some of these retiring stamp sets and love them a little bit longer. So in here, we're going to grab this one. So we need a couple of different colors. And I know that in this Bermuda Bay is going to be a really bright color. So I want to tone that down a little bit. And this leaf. And let's see, we'll grab another block. And use this leaf. <clears throat> and then we do have another one here, but it's a bit bigger. I'm going to stick to these three and I'm going to keep my blotchy piece for um, going on the little bits in between. All right, don't have an actual neutral, but that's going to be fine. So here we have our piece all prepared to start stamping. I'm going to start with Bermuda Bay and I'm going to use this leaf here. I don't know what type of leaf that is. If you know, do let me know. Uh, so Bermuda Bay is a pretty bright color, i got to say. So we're going to do a little stamping off and see how that works. So I just need a piece of scratch paper here. Some copier paper to absorb it. Now this is a distinctive stamp set. So it has a lot of um, depth to the actual stamps. So that's stamping off once and that's how it would go on. And I think that's what I would like to go with, the lighter color. So we'll ink it up, we'll stamp it off once, and then we'll just get started stamping. I find when you do these kinds of techniques that it's good to start stamping with the same, when you're doing the collage technique that is, keep stamping with the same stamp set. I'm sorry, the same stamp. And then move on to the next stamp from there. So what I'm going for here is to have a little bit of stamping on all three layers. All right, so that's it for this for right now. I might go back in with some more, 
but I find when I'm doing the um, this technique of collage stamping this way that it's less is more. Sometimes you can get really carried away and you have too much of one color. So it's better to stop and then come back and change and add it in again. So let's close this ink pad and then we'll grab pear pizzazz. Oops. Grab pear pizzazz here. And I'm going to do pear pizzazz in two colors. I'm going to do it full strength, which will make it quite a bit darker. So this is full strength. And then this is stamped off. So I'm going to do this leaf full strength. And I'm fine with whatever goes right smack in the middle because I'm going to be adding a la label on here. But if you wanted to, you could leave an open spot in the middle for your greeting to fit in there and then just fit it right in. And you'll see it's not perfect, like it's not lining up perfectly, but it's okay. That's totally fine. I'm just going to put a little bit up in the corner here. Here we go. And now I want to stamp this off in Pear Pizzazz, but I want to use a different shape. So we'll take this leaf off and I think we'll have more options still inside the case to use. So I think I'll go with this one. So this one and this one in the stamp set are the same leaf it's just one goes to the right and one goes to the left but it's the same stamp basically yeah it is it's the same stamp okay so now we're going to do stamping off with this so let's flip it over so we have a little more of a neutral starting point and we'll stamp it off once and just double check yep that's going to be fine and we'll put this one here and here and let's see where else maybe down here you don't have to have them all going straight up and down you can definitely have them and fill in the spots so I'm going to leave that for filling in spots later because I may want to do that as I get going along so that's the pear pizzazz and now we're going to add in the little, oh, where's the other leaf? Oh, here it is. The other one with Mango Melody. So let's just see how this stamps full strength. I think I'm thinking this ink pad does need re-inking. So it's, it's nice and light enough now that I don't need to worry about it being too dark. No, that's perfect. going to add a little bit of shading in different ways because it's needing re-inking. Put this over here. So you can do this with other shapes, of course, maybe with animals or flowers. Whatever you have in your stash will work really nicely with this technique doesn't look like much just yet but we're gonna get that wow factor going here any moment now all right so there is all of my stamping done so each time you do this card even with the same um, colors it's going to have a really different look unless you take a picture of each layer of stamping and follow that along right now we're ready to pull it apart and attach it onto the layer pieces so pulling those back in, we've got the card base. This is your standard um, five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're going to put the first piece down. So I'm going to gently twist to remove this. I do want to kind of have an idea that they're in the right orientation. So I don't want to get them upside down. I, I know this one goes on here. And this piece is going to go directly on here. So now that's all the open space where the stamping didn't come through. When we layer the cardstock, the Mango Melody mats, that's going to hide all of those little spots where it's a bit of imperfection. And maybe 
your stamping didn't go through. So don't worry as you've got them layered up that um, where the two or three pieces are touching that there isn't stamping directly beside it. That's a-okay. So then here's our smallest piece. I'm going to layer it on here. Don't worry about the glue dots too. If you happen to have temporary adhesive, it works well. I'm not worrying about the glue dots. They're, they're pretty flat, so I will just leave them right there. But you could take them off if you wanted to. And then this piece goes on here. And you see how quickly this goes together and stunning it is as a card layout. So pick three, basically pick three colors. And like I did, you can do some stamping off and then some regular stamping with the same color or whatever suits you. So you see how we're going to line this up here to put this down that the spot where it was white is totally hidden by the mat. Perfect, it worked out great. I love it when that happens. There we go. So pretty, so, so pretty. And these colors are kind of turning out quite nicely. So I'm kind of trying to line it up. I'm not worried too much going to look fab and then this piece on here so you want to get all the stamping done before you add the mats and I don't do any dimensionals on these you'll find that it works quite well just to um, put them on there you're getting enough bit of height this way anyway and save all that for your greeting so I cut out two of the die pieces just in case I ended up not doing a good job on my stamping. In this step, I'm going to use the Hello stamp again, which is in the uh, Forever Fern stamp set. Take this guy off. I'm going to do my practice run. Put my scratch paper in here just so that I have a practice run and see how even that's going to go. That looks good. Grab my little label here, ink it up again. And we're going in. There we go. Perfectly centered. Not bad for a cling stamp. And then I'll keep that the other die cut because I can use it for something else. And then, oh, I also wanted to add a dragonfly to this. So let's get some scratch paper for that. Oop. And then we're ready to go there. Got some scrap paper right here. Mm -hmm. It's got the right size. So it'll work. This will work perfectly. Okay, so I'll grab one of the dragonflies. As I mentioned, the dragonflies punch is carrying over you can do these in black as a silhouette you can do them in vellum or cardstock and then when you punch it through you'll see one of the small ones comes out of the top and then the regular size one there it's kind of hard to show that with the reflection so i like both of them but i seem more drawn to this one and i don't know why that is but let's maybe try the other one it just is hard to tell which is which okay and we're gonna do this guy i think in bermuda bay i think that would be nice stamped off once so we never did use that little splotchy one that's okay so we'll try this and if i don't like it stamped off well then that's fine we'll do it in another color so stamp it off and then stamp it on here, ready to be punched out. Yeah, that's right. That's the right density of color that I was looking for. So then I just grab my punch. And this scrap piece was um, just from my stash. It's uh, four and a quarter by three. A three by three would work fine, but you want to have something to hang on to when you stick it into the punch. All right, so here we go. We're going to dress this up a little bit too, though. 
so you'll see it punched out the dragonfly that I stamped but it also punched out another white one so you could punch a bunch of the white ones and add them on your card too so a couple things I want to do here I want to add some wink of Stella that's carrying over in our line yay because we do like our wink of Stella and I'm also going to take my bone folder and I'm going to just give the wings a little bit of texture a little bit of um, pulling up just gently you could use a pencil as well and that just kind of gives them a little bit of life makes them look a little bit brighter and then grab my wink of Stella and I don't get you detailed with this I simply add it to the wings I like it on butterflies and the dragonflies and if I had the uh, firefly stamp set I would do the same it just adds that little bit of shimmer that you see when you see a dragonfly out there in the garden or on your walk all right next is to add some dimension to our greeting so we'll pop this one up I've also seen people go ahead and use wink of Stella on the words I'm not sure I'm steady enough for that but you could certainly do that put that there and then we're going to pop this one up and I'm just going to put some dimensionals down the body not even maybe down the right right down the tail if you will Grab my scissors and I'm going to use so this is the end of the dimensionals but you'll see you can cut down this part of it like that and it just makes it thin enough but leaves me some spots that I can use as regular size dimensionals Oh, this is going to be a bit long. That's okay. We can trim it off. I'm just putting this down the body, right down the tail. Snip off that excess. And we're ready to add him to the card. How pretty is that? All right. So then a little bit of embellishment. On this one, I had used the 2026 sorry 2020 I don't know I forget the years uh -huh. but the um, I can put these pearls uh, I'm using up a lot of the retired ones so this is the 2021 to 2023 in colors because they match with the evening evergreen I have these pastel pearls and I've got some of the gray or white ones purple ones are they gray are they they are kind of gray that's okay that'll look good too to use up here on either side of the greeting it has little holes that you could put ribbon through I rarely do that I usually just put some embellishments on the ends just to dress it up a bit and this one die is from the fabulous frames which are also retiring and I've used this little die quite a lot all right so that is my project for tonight thank you for watching once again here are your layers so your white cardstock layers are four by five and a quarter three by four and a quarter and two by three and a quarter and your two mats that I did in either Sahara sand or mango melody were three and a quarter by four and a half and two and a quarter by three and a half and that's it thank you for watching have a wonderful Easter everyone enjoy the warmer weather it was supposed to be 18 here in Guelph today I did not see it anywhere near that with the cold and damp weather but I hope you get some lovely weather and you enjoy your Easter weekend with family and friends bye for now